हेलो एवरीवन वेलकम टू एनालॉग इलेक्ट्रॉनिक सर्किट्स लेक्चर नंबर नाइन एक्स्ट्रा पार्ट नंबर टू सो वी विल कंटिन्यू आर डिस्कशन ऑन हाई फ्रीक्वेंसी मॉडल ऑफ बीजेटी इन द लास्ट लेक्चर वी हैव डिस्कस्ड हाउ वी हैव अराइव्ड एट दिस स्टेप सो दिस इज बेसिकली एन अप्रोक्सीमेट हाई फ्रीक्वेंसी मॉडल ऑफ अ बीजेटी नथिंग बट हाइब्रिड पैम मॉडल एट मिड फ्रीक्वेंसी प्लस द प्लस द पैरासिटिक कैपेसिटेंसेस व्हिच आर सी पाई कनेक्टेड बिटवीन द बेस एंड द एमिटर टर्मिनल एंड सी म्यू कनेक्टेड बिटवीन द बेस एंड द कलेक्टर टर्मिनल एंड सी सी एस कनेक्टेड बिटवीन द कलेक्टर एंड द सबस्टेट टर्मिनल टुवर्ड्स द ग्राउंड सो दिस कैपेसिटेंस कैन बी सीन द ओरिजिन कैन बी सीन फ्रॉम द स्ट्रक्चर इटसेल्फ नाउ दिस इज अ मॉडर्न एनपीएन बीजेटी स्ट्रक्चर व्हिच इज यूज्ड इन द इंटीग्रेटेड सर्किट so here the specialty is that uh, you know entire device is made on a single silicon substrate and all the contacts are taken from the top so we here first we have emitter base collector and then substrate n plus p n p plus p plus is the substrate so here the base emitter junction is powered by so there is a capacitance associated with it c pi then we have base collector junction reverse bias we have a capacitor associated with it as c mu which is the transition capacitance c pi is called as the diffusion capacitance and uh, your uh, n plus uh, p plus and n uh, collector and substrate are also reverse bias because substrate of a integrated circuit is normally connected to the ground and collector is at a higher potential so it's a reverse bias therefore this ccs capacitance also exists right so this was the high frequency model of a bjt next we see now what do we mean by wiring capacitances so let's consider a amplifier circuit now i have not drawn the entire circuit over here i have just drawn the symbol of uh, of a bjt and rest of the amplifier part is understood is there so amplifier requires a dc supply it requires a ac input and it delivers at the output ac output which is a high amplitude signal and uh, we are applying we are considering that ac input has a very high frequency so what really happens is the ac input source signal source is connected to the base of the bjt with the help of wires correct the ground is also connected with a wire and uh, the output from the collector is connected to the load with a wire so there are a lot of wires involved in it but since we are dealing with a high frequency uh, this wire over here at the base terminal is at a higher potential compared to the wire at the emitter terminal which is at the ground similarly the wire at the collector terminal is at a higher potential than the one at the emitter so there is a wire at higher potential and wire at low potential difference in the potential and if air act as dielectric then these two wires will act as a parallel plate capacitor and uh, with air as a dielectric with positive charges on one plate negative charges on another plate so basically difference in the potential so this will give rise to a capacitance so we have two capacitance associated over here cwi and cwo cwi is the input wiring capacitance and cwo is the output wiring capacitance and how does this form a capacitor because c is dq by dv so whenever there is a change in the voltage that is happening because of high frequency there will be change in the charge right so the potential over here might change due to change in the ac input signal so therefore we have this capacitance present over here due to um, very high frequency and these are because of the wires which are conducting wire so next is uh, uh, the wires this is a description given over here uh, cwo and cwo is the output uh, input and output wiring capacitances and their range is about 2 to 10 picofarad and they are also called as stray capacitances right now let's see why these capacitances are significant at higher frequency let's consider we are having at a working at a higher frequency let's say around hundreds of megahertz so the reactance offered by the capacitance will be given by 1 upon 2 pi fc where f is around 100 megahertz and the capacitance value is around 2 picofarad so if you work out in a calculator the xc will be around 800 ohms which is quite low but not as low that it can be considered as a short not as high so that it can be considered as open so therefore the strave or wiring capacitance are neither short nor open but they are considered okay so that's why we cannot ignore them because the impedance is neither very high nor very very low so that's why uh, at higher uh, let's say that at even higher frequency let's say at 1 gigahertz so what will happen to xc xc will fall to a very actually this should be a low value not infinite 
it will fall to zero, right? Zero or a low value. Then the stray capacitance will act as sort. Then your amplifier will stop functioning as an amplifier because the wiring capacitance will short circuit the internal terminals of the BJT. And that is very much a dangerous situation. Okay. So this was about the wiring capacitances. They are active. They are present because of the wires, conducting wires, connecting the input source to the input of the amplifier. And they are active at very high frequency. So while considering the high frequency response of a BJT amplifier, in fact, of any amplifier, we have to consider the wiring capacitances. Now, let's move on to the next topic. Next is we study the high frequency response of BJT amplifier. So I've drawn the complete uh, BJT amplifier. First of all, the ones which are marked in black, we have already discussed in the mid frequency, in the low frequency analysis. So this is a BJT amplifier, common emitter. R1, R2 are the biasing registers. Uh, this is RC. This register value is RC. Collector capacitor and we have a resistance at the emitter terminal also. So this is my emitter terminal. We have a bypass capacitor CE, input, capa input coupling capacitor CC1 and CC2, output coupling capacitor. Remember CC1, CC2 and CE are externally connected capacitors. Okay. Whereas all the capacitors which are marked in red are in inherent capacitances, especially over here uh, between the base collector CBC, between the base and the emitter CBE, and between the collector and the substrate CCS. These are inherent in the BJT itself. Okay. Whereas CWI and CWO are associated with the input and the output wiring. So that is input and output wiring capacitances, right? So you have to make very, very clear, very, very sure that these are inherent in nature. These are present because of the BJT structure and the wiring, which is connecting the input to the amplifier and the output to the load. Then we have input source, which is AC and output, which is again an AC. And it uh, entire circuit is powered by the DC power supply. Fine. So we'll analyze this circuit further. So over here we have uh, CBC. It's called as CBC or CMU or CT which is a transition capacitance. Uh, then we have CBE or we can call it CPI or CD, which is the diffusion capacitance. Last lecture, that is AEC lecture number nine, extra part one, we have discussed the origin of these capacitances. Okay. So these together are called as parasitic or interelectrode or stray capacitances. And their range are in picofarad only. Very, very small. Pico is 10 to minus 12. Then we have CWI and CWO, which are wiring capacitances, or also they often call it as stray capacitances. Their range is also in picofarad. Then we have input coupling capacitor CC1, output coupling capacitor CC2, and bypass capacitor CE. These are externally connected capacitances, and their normally values are in microfarad, right? So we require these capacitors, uh, these capacitors CC1, CC2, and CE for proper functioning of the amplifier. Without them, you cannot isolate the AC from DC. You want both AC and DC to coexist in the same circuit and without interfering. So that's why we have this coupling capacitors and the bypass capacitor present over here, right? But the capacitors which are marked in red are all inherent or due to the wiring in the circuit at, at, at a very high frequency, okay? So let's study the status of capacitors, all these capacitors in the different frequency range. So basically we are categorizing into two categories. One is the stray capacitance. One is the stray capacitance and other, another is the connected capacitors. Remember, uh, we will be dealing with picofarad stray capacitances and microfarad connected capacitances. Their range will be in microfarad and picofarad. So let's start. Uh, which capacitor will affect which frequency range? So at DC, at DC means frequency zero, no doubt XC will be infinite. Okay, so all the connected and the stray capacitances are open circuit. So at DC, we, while drawing the DC equivalent circuit, we consider all the capacitors as open circuit. So in this case, the inter-electrode or the stray capacitance or the wiring capacitance also are open circuit. They don't disturb the circuit at all. Now, let's move on to low frequencies. So low frequencies will be in the range of few hertz, right? So in this range, uh, your reactants offered by the uh, connected capacitors will be in, uh, let's calculate that. So it will be one upon two pi 
you know few hertz that will be around 50 hertz let's say so into microfarad let's say 10 microfarad so 1 divided by 2 pi into 50 into 10 microfarad the answer will be close to 380 ohms now this is neither a high value nor a very low value so therefore your connected capacitors are considered at low frequencies they are considered as it is right uh, while drawing the low frequency equivalent model we have kept the capacitors as it is that's why they have kept right they are not too low so that we can short circuit them they are not too high so that we can open circuit them so they are moderate value so that's why we have to consider the connected capacitors at low frequency what about stay capacitors so let's consider x is 1 upon 2 pi uh, into few hertz into picofarad because the range of stay capacitance is picofarad let's consider one picofarad and frequency is 50 so 1 divided by 2 pi 50 into 1 picofarad the answer will be close to 3.18 into 10 is to 9 ohms which is tremendously high value right so therefore straight away we can say that the impedance offered by the capacitance stay capacitances will be very very high therefore at low frequency stay capacitors are open circuit okay so they won't influence the low frequency response let's come to the mid frequency response right so mid frequency response is somewhere around 100 kilohertz so the impedance offered by the uh, connected capacitors will be somewhere around let's say few kilohertz right let's consider 50 kilohertz and uh, the connected capacitor is around 10 microfarad so if you calculate this this will come close to 0 0.32 uh, ohms actually this will be ohms not hertz okay because it's a impedance right so earlier also i have written ohms only right yeah so here the impedance offered will be very very low so if if uh, impedance is very low of a, of a capacitor we can consider it as a sort therefore the connected capacitors are sought at mid frequency remember in the mid frequency equivalent circuit we have considered all the connected capacitors at short circuit that was the reason why okay fine next is uh, xc uh, offered uh, impedance offered by the stay capacitances at uh, mid frequencies so let's consider 50 kilohertz and 1 picofarad so 1 divided by 2 pi 50k into 1 picofarad will be around 3.18 mega ohm into 10 is to 6 that's also a very high value that's why at mid frequency the stay capacitors are also still open open circuited it, it, it will not affect the operation of the bjd amplifier at all now let's come to high frequency so this is very very important high frequencies means around in the range of 100 megahertz or greater than that so let's consider the impedance offered by the uh, connected capacitors so we have over here let's consider 50 mega ohm and connected capacitor values around 10 microfarad so if you work out this 1 divided by 2 pi into 50 mega uh, um, you know 50 megahertz into 10 microfarad you will get answer close to 0 0.32 into 10 is to minus 3 ohm which is extremely low value so impedance offered by this uh, connected capacitors at high frequency is very very low therefore they are connected as short circuit at higher frequency okay remember the the connected capacitors are considered to be short circuit at extremely high frequency now let's consider the uh, impedance offered by the stay capacitances at extremely high frequency let's consider the frequency to be 50 megahertz and uh, capacitor value is 1 picofarad so if you work it out in a calculator this number will be around 3183 ohms so it's a moderate value neither too high nor too low therefore the stay capacitors in the form of your wiring capacitances or inter electrode capacitances are neither short nor open therefore they are considered at high frequency this is very very important so at high frequencies the only capacitors which wake up and are active are the stay capacitors or the parasitic capacitors so that's very very important point okay so yeah so this was it uh, we have seen the response of various capacitors and we have come to the end of this session so let's revise what we have done so far so here we have seen that at higher frequency only the stay capacitors are active at mid, at mid frequencies both the uh, the connected capacitors are short and uh, at, at at mid frequency the stay capacitors are open at extremely low frequencies uh, the stay capacitors are open 
and the connected capacitors are considered at low frequencies and at dc both uh, all the connected and the stray capacitance are behaving as open okay so yeah i guess uh, that will be all so next time what we will do is we will try to fit this bjt amplifier and replace the bjt with its high frequency model and we'll analyze the circuit further right so that will be all for today next time uh, we will also discuss uh, one more concept which is called as miller effect or miller theorem so after that we will continue our topic on high frequency response of bjt amplifier so that will be all for today thank you everyone for joining